last topic in this lecture, Doppler effect. <coughs> the Doppler effect is a very useful law, quite useful here, even here on Earth. When the policeman gives you a ticket, how do they know how fast you are going? They shoot a radar beam, right, towards your car. And then as that beam is coming, hitting your car, it bounces back to the radar, the gun. The difference of the frequencies of the reflected ray and the ray that's going out will tell the, the gun how fast you are going. What principle is it using? Doppler effect. You see? Uh, how about uh, when we can find out how fast a, a pitcher pitches a baseball? How do we know? Same thing, we shoot a gun towards the baseball, reflects back off the baseball, we know how fast it's going. Again, Doppler effect. So Doppler effect is used to determine how fast a star is approaching us and whether the star is approaching us or moving away from us. So not only whether it's moving away or approaching, but also how fast it's approaching. Or whether it is spinning or moving around another star. If the star is moving towards us, its, its spectrum will all be shifted towards the blue, towards the shorter end of the spectrum. This is because the light waves that it's sending out towards us get bunched up and they get closer and closer together. Okay? When wavelength decreases, frequency increases. <coughs> so, and then that's how you cause the Doppler shift. Let's see this uh, here. See here? So imagine they're drawing a light bulb, but imagine this is a star. If you are here and the star is approaching you and it's radiating, the, if you are on the receiving end of that, you get shorter wavelengths. So when the wavelengths are shorter, that means the frequency is higher. So they are shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum. Okay. But if you're at the back end of the star and the star is going away from you, then the wavelength is larger. So if the wavelength is larger, they are now red shifted. Uh, they should have drawn this picture more red, red color and then this as a blue to make it nicer. This also happens with sound waves. Uh, when a source of a sound wave is coming toward you, the, the, the wavelength between the sound waves is shorter, the frequency is higher, so you hear a higher pitch. Like if they're playing music in the background, they'll go ah, as they're coming towards you. And then as they're going away from you, the wavelength is larger, so it'll be oh, you know. So uh, one way to illustrate this is to go something like this. Just get a tube and then just spin it. Okay, what you're experiencing is a continual low pitch, high pitch. Okay, so when it's coming toward you, it should be high pitch. Away from you, low pitch. Low frequency, high frequency. Low frequency, high frequency, okay? You see that? That's a Doppler shift right there. So know whether a tornado is developing. We can send a, a radar beam, and then the weather pattern as it's rotating, we can tell the two ends of the uh, tornado wh how, how, what's the difference of the frequency of the two ends. You see? Okay, and then that shows you here a police gun sh ra sh uh, shooting the radar beam. You're driving towards the radar beam, so the reflected beam will have a shorter wavelength, and the difference of those two frequencies will allow the uh, gun to know what velocity you are going at. So next time you get a ticket, go to court and say, uh, judge, don't blame me, blame Doppler for inventing, the, uh, for coming up with this law. It's because of him, okay? So if a star is moving away from you, its spectrum will all be redshifted. Example, if the bomber lines of a star 
are showing 408, 432, 484, 654 nanometers. So let's say you're studying a star's spectral lines, and you notice that the spectral lines of that star are 408, 432, 484, 654. Is that star approaching you, or is that star moving away from you? So in order to answer this question correctly, you have to already have memorized the bomber lines of a stationary star, a star that is at rest. Okay? So what is the bomber lines of a stationary star? Look at the previous page. 410, right? 410, 434. 486, 656, right? You have to know that. This might be on the test, okay? So you have to know the stationary star's bomber lines. So what has happened to every single one of those wavelengths? Have they gotten shorter or have they gotten bigger? 410 has turned to 408. 434 has turned to 432, 486, 484. So they have all gotten what? Shorter, right? So if they all have gotten shorter, have they redshifted or have they blue shifted? Shorter wavelength means what? For a shorter wavelength is the blue end of the spectrum, right? So they have all blue shifted. Why? Because they've all gone towards the blue end. You see? They've all gone towards the blue end. So is the star approaching us or is it moving away from us? If they've all gotten towards the blue end, which is they blue shifted, then that means they are, the star is coming towards us. So the answer is the star is approaching us. You see? And the opposite would be true if they have all gotten larger, you see. So this is, gives you an example of how we study the spectral line. We'll, you see, we'll draw something like this, 486. So this is a star at rest, 486, 656. So if the 656 turns into 657, it shifted this way. If the 486 turns into 486.6, shift it this way, shift it this way, shift it this way, this way. If they're all shifted this way, that's the red end of the spectrum, the larger wavelength. That means the star is moving away from you. So what they wrote here on the, paper, on the thing, you might not see it, it, is, it says the star is re in recession. Recession is astronomers' way of saying it's receding away from you. It's moving away from you. They've all shifted this way. Now, if they've all shifted this way, which is what has happened in this problem, then that means they have blue shifted. So the star is approaching you. So this end is the blue end. This end is the red end. Why? The 650 nanometer, 700 nanometer is right there. This is the red end, right? Large wavelength. This is the blue end, shorter wavelength. So in order to answer this kind of question, if I ask you, then just know the stationary star and then know which end is the blue end, which end is the red end. <coughs> Uh, 408, what's the wavelength of the uh, star that is at rest? It was on the previous page. You have to compare it to that one. Yeah, you have to compare it to that one. Yeah, yeah, you can't compare this to this, this to this, this to this. You got to compare this one. Very good question, though, by the way. Compare this one to the 410, the one at rest. Compare this one to the one at rest. Compare each of them, and you will notice that they all got shorter from what the rest one was, right? And when they got shorter, that means 
they all went this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. So the star is uh, approaching you. If a star is spinning, its spectrum will get wider and blur. If a star is revolving around another star, both of their spectra will successively get red-shifted and blue-shifted. This is called a binary star system. The Doppler effect is also used in predicting tornadoes and reading, as I said, the speed of a car. So this is a very important principle as you know this. Okay, with that, we now start lecture six.